Hey YouTube, it's JP Dillon. Welcome to part four of the 1959 Philco Predictor Princess. In our last video, we repopulated the board with new capacitors and tube sockets, and we took measurements on a variety of out of tolerance resistors. Uh, and you can see that I have made a diagram here of what they are, their values, and their locations. And we'll be replacing those. And then there's the infamous couplets, which I've marked here on the board, all but one. Uh, and one I have not found on this board. I think it might be on the IF board. It's been a while since I've done that. Uh, also, what you didn't see off camera uh, was another crack I found in the board whilst taking the measurement of R31 here. And I don't know if you can see that. That big crack right there, right in the middle of your screen, that runs from that point at R31 up to R31. 29 and there was a number of traces that I jumped there as a function of that breakage uh, So I'm glad I spotted that I think before the board goes back in we'll ohm out all the traces With the capacitor wizard because it's great at finding breaks in a board or bad contact But uh, primarily what I want to talk about today is couplets and couplets are these little molded networks like this one this one, uh, this one, this one, there's one hiding back here, and there's one that looks like a disc capacitor, uh, which is this guy down here. It just looks like a disc capacitor, but there's actually a number on it uh, that is, well, that one doesn't have it, but that's N4. And I thought about building couplets myself. Um, but then uh, going through the various databases of the Antique Radios Forum and Video Karma, uh, I decided to go a different route. So this fellow, Chris Rigotti, I hope I'm not butchering his name, has a website called the TV Restore Guy or TVRestoreGuy.com, and he has a variety of parts for Predictas, and amongst them are these couplets that he makes, and they look totally like the legit original factory couplets. And in fact, let me get the bag open and I'll show them to you. And here they are. And these look literally like the original parts. And he's manufactured them and molded them. And the molding is even the correct color. Uh, if you hold them next to the original part, uh, it looks pretty close to the color of the original part, minus some fading and dirt and age. Now, you get the whole set for $50, including shipping, which is a phenomenal deal. Now, if you think about the amount of time that you're going to have to take to build each one of these couplets, uh, this is a great price. $50 for an entire set of couplets for this chassis, and they are drop-in. So, we will be replacing these for sure. And uh, I just have to transcribe which part numbers go which. Because as we can see, the, he has a part number written on there, uh, which then corresponds to something else. Um, I forget here, but just an example. Here's the 30-6030-1. Uh, <clears throat> or maybe that's a... Well, anyways, on his website, he says, you may have this part in lieu of this part. You may have whatever. Uh, but he says these are the correct ones for the 10L43 chassis. So, yeah. So we're going to go ahead and uh, unsolder all the bad resistors and take the couplets out one by one, noting what they are for what location. And then we'll stick the new couplets in. Okay, so here's our board. I've marked on the appropriate sides, circling in red where the uh, actual couplets are. And so I'm just going to get to removing them. We'll replace them one by one. And these networks are tuned networks that are for various bandpass applications, anything from sound to audio to video to sweep. Uh, so it's very important that they work. 
Many of them will have components that drift off tolerance and create all sorts of headaches. Anything from video to sound to vertical sweep to a lot. So I like to see them get completely changed where possible. And so let's go ahead and pull out the first guy here. This is N2. And N2 is the 30 6509 1. And so here's a problem. The uh, terminals broke off because they were old and fatigued. And although I did spend some time desoldering this, I guess it was not enough for the old weak leads. Make sure that's all gone there. You can see that it was just one here that was left. And it don't want to come out. Already we're off to a great start, huh? All right. <clears throat> and then the new ones are keyed, so you can't really mess it up. Uh, he's even bothered to number them, too, so... If you screw this up, you really must not have your head on straight. Because it's almost impossible to put this in backwards. Just put it in the holes here and secure it. I'm going to leave maybe a couple millimeters underneath it for breathing room. Not that it's really supposed to get hot, but it's just... I like air circulating around things. It keeps them lasting longer. That doesn't mean you should elevate your capacitors and things, you know, half an inch off the board. Uh, a couple millimeters is sufficient. These Philco's run really toasty, so I want to make sure that it's not going to have to come back. My goal is for sure reliability as much as it can be seen on these. So that's one. And you can see it there sticking up. Let's go ahead and do this guy next. Which, as you can see, I've circled here. Try to keep it out of the glare of the lamp there. This one uh, that I'm pulling out, I believe, is a later replacement. This TV has a lot of hours on it. I'm pretty sure it was serviced by its owner. There's a lot of new parts in here that I pulled out. Or newer, I guess I should say. Probably the thing that put this thing out of service was the dead CRT because uh, before the owner got a new one, this CRT in this was absolutely dead. I don't have a holder for this board, so I don't have anything to hold the board still, so bear with me while I desolder this stuff. Get this out of here. And this should come out now. It's working on it. Okie dokie. So that one's out our old part and then that is an N3 which is this 30 dash uh, 6030 7a that's what's supposed to go in there this guy here so we'll flip him over and locate our N3 on the board here It really doesn't matter what last pin that goes into. I think we'll use the far one to alleviate some stress, but they're both tied to the same point. And that one's going to go in there. And then we'll just solder that bad boy up.
is one. There's two. And then there's three. And we'll just clip these guys off here. All right, next. Let's see here. I guess we'll do the one up here. And six. situated okay it's amazing the inconsistencies of the circuit board some of it solder comes up nice and easy and others you kind of have to fight with it I guess it just depends on the heat exposure and how baked this stuff is when we get it out of here. Get to listen to the fake church bells at 9 a.m. every day. I forget who makes those systems, but they all sound the same. I suppose it's a nice difference from ambulances screaming down the street or cars speeding on the adjacent street which happens a lot here where the shops at on la mesa boulevard we have a huge amount of speeders that tear down la mesa boulevard between uh, grossmont boulevard and jackson drive because you get a fair amount of space before you hit the next light so people just stomp it been a lot of accidents along this area. Okay. Let's see. Nope. I got one more here. Stupid me. I actually marked it. And I'm like, why am I not desoldering this now? Feel free to bypass this boring section at any time by using the speed increasing tool. I think on desktops you can do it a lot easier than on a phone, but this guy wants to fight me, he doesn't want to come out. It's just this middle terminal here, which I might end up cutting. There we go. That's out. Okay, so that looks like 30-6532-3, which is uh, our N6, 6532-3, that's going to be this guy right here, and again, it's just a matter of inserting it into its proper location. And he puts long enough leads on here that you have plenty of leeway to work. So don't worry about that. I can tell this guy really knows what he's doing. If any of you have ever uh, dealt with this gentleman before, uh, give me a couple of shout-outs in the comments. This is the first time I've actually purchased anything from him, but everything I read about this man is uh, absolutely wonderful far as this reproduction couplets are concerned. And we're going to go ahead and solder this guy in. I'm not going to... Woo! Wasn't that fancy? Yeah. I'm not going to uh, deal with replacing all of the uh, there we go hold still I'm not going to deal with replacing all of the resistors on camera because it's a lot it really is a lot and I don't want to subject everybody to that kind of boredom so I'll change all the resistors out off camera and then we'll do the final checks of the uh, all the traces on the board 
because I want to make absolute certain that we don't have any broken connections or anything like that that needs attention before I put this thing back in. Because the last thing I want to do is to have to keep removing the board, which will, of course, weaken it and make it more prone to damage. This is, I want this to be a one and done as much as possible. Absolutely one and done as much as possible. All right, let's clear all that away. Uh, let's see, who's next? I suppose we can do these guys down here. Now, N4 has been replaced already by somebody, and it does not have markings on it. So I have to uh, cross it with the service literature. And then N1 is, I believe, on the IF board. So we'll need to check that, too, because... Uh, well, the IF board will be after the main board because the way I do things, I want to have the sweep uh, and audio and such working before we get to the tuner part. Now, if for some reason I can't get the tuner working, which is unlikely because it's very rare that the tuners have failures that prevent them from being serviced, I would have to convert this to an AV monitor, which would require pulling up the port again. Uh, so we'll have to do a brief check before we put the chassis back in to see that the tuner is salvageable. Sometimes it is, it isn't, and that's very rare, but I uh, want to cover all my bases on that one. Because again, if, the less you take these things apart, the better because the shock of service factor on these old boards, as we've seen, is something scary. Okay, I think there's one there that I'm ignoring blatantly again, like the other one that I have circled. Okay. Give a wiggle. See who's still holding on here. Yeah, all these are pretty, still pretty holding on. Especially this one here. This one's our troublemaker. I also know that solder loves to creep down into the holes on these boards and makes it difficult for removal. Which means you got to heat the part up really hot. Yeah, I can tell this one's going to be fun. And the last thing I want to do is put stress on this board. So we're going to grab some pliers. And I'm just going to wiggle these until I feel them loose in their holes. That one sure was a troublemaker right there. Okay. Yep, that makes it loose in there. That's good. Like I said, I want to minimize the stress. Are you going to come out or not come out? Come on. Got one pin in the middle there. I think I'm just going to get a set of diagonal cutters and cut those flush. Let's see if that helps us at all. Yep, that makes it come right out. Okay, so you're a 3631-2, which is going to be this guy here. I really do like that he uh, takes the time to mark everything. Let's play our leads out. Now, 
and I'm just working them down into the holes as I get there. Pushing it down in. And I bend over the outer leads here so that we get a means to hold it in place while we solder it. We're getting there. All right, so he's in there. Let me get my diagonal cutters. All right, so all we have left is one big couplet, which is going to be this guy right here. Everything's kind of in a straight line, so it should be fairly straightforward to get it out. Then we'll take a look on the schematic to see where N4 and N1 really are as far as their part numbers. And then uh, we'll see about replacing those two. They actually just look like disc capacitors and they may very well be, so I'll have to take a measurement and see what the component identifier says about them if I can't find anything on the service literature about it. This one's coming out just so much easier than the other was. And I wonder that this being a, looks kind of like an afterthought one, like one that came later, like the bright orange one we have. Who knows? Sometimes I wonder if Philco was like a Monday through Friday kind of company. So you can see two of the same chassis and they'll be like extravagantly different looking as far as parts and arrangement and tidiness of build. See that came out super easy. Here's a 6035-2. But see, look at look at that. The printing's on the wrong side from this vantage, but it's the same thing, you know? It's just so nicely put together. I love seeing crafts like this, where somebody just really cares about what they do. Alright, so that's the last of the big couplets. Bend these guys over a little bit. And we'll just solder them in. not want to take. There we go. And then we'll cut off our excess here. Okay, so that's it for the big couplets. Let's see uh, where the other two go. Okay, so in order, and the factory service manual lists N1 as being on the IF board. Which is kind of what I thought. So N1 is the 6039-2 and N4 is the uh, 6031-1. So this is going to go in our N4 spot, uh, which let me just go ahead and note that that's right here. So we'll flip this over. Let's see if I can just get that out of there. Easy peasy. Okay, 
By the way, if uh, you want to find the Predictor Princess original factory service literature, the scan isn't great, but it's legible. Uh, you can go to the Early Television Foundation website, and they have a library of documents there that you can download for free to help you get these sets going. Now, it's, uh, it's very useful. It's not the most complete, and again, the scan isn't the greatest, but if you just need it to work, and I've just soldered the wrong one. I was supposed to do the one up here. Uh, it's a great resource, especially with early color television. If you're working on like a CT100 or something, definitely look those guys up. They have a convention twice a year. Never been there. Love to go. I happen to be around that area in the future. I'll definitely try to do that. All right, so that's that. And so the new 6031-1 goes in there. And the leads over and solder it in. And then that'll be it for the couplets for the main board. The only one that's left is for the IF board. And we'll be doing that after we can validate that the main chassis is capable of producing a full full sweep raster. And then we still have to replace all the bad resistors and check all the foil traces and stuff. But uh, for now, we've got a freshly populated board with new couplets and everything. Just need to do the resistors. And again, I'm not going to do those on camera because if you look at the list here, that's a lot of stuff that's out of tolerance, and I'm, I'm not going to subject people to that. So I will change those out uh, off camera. I've already ohmed out all these little peaking coils and things that commonly open. There's a couple of them on here. Uh, I've also ohmed out the uh, other coils and transformers to make sure that they're intact. Um, so that way there's no surprises when we put it back in. But yeah, uh, then once we have the resistors replaced and the board traces checked, I think I'm going to pull up VR1 here, take it apart. You can see the little sparklies, or maybe you can't, but it's, it's got tin whisker disease, so we need to clean this out, paint the body, so that we don't turn into arky sparky. A lot of work to be done on these, but uh, we are progressing. All right, so we have replaced all of the out of tolerance resistors. And so now we've got caps, couplets, resistors. Um, really, the next step that I'm just going to do off camera is I'm going to pull the pot assembly here and take the metal shield off around it and uh, burnish it and paint it since it has a tendency to get tin whiskers which will migrate inside and cause all sorts of havoc. Uh, I'm also going to resolder the rest of the board and then very carefully uh, with a the famous capacitor wizard down here uh, ohm out all these traces and make sure that we have excellent continuity and everything's ready to go back in uh, and then hopefully the next video uh, we'll have this wired up to the chassis uh, and we'll turn it on and hopefully get a full deflection raster out of it because at that point uh, then we can tackle the IF strip and the tuner and everything else about it but I like to work backwards on these sets you get the high voltage and sweep going first and then you work on the audio video IF and tuner uh, that's really the only practical way to do these just because of the way they're built and whatnot so I'm getting excited uh, it's about ready to go back in the set, and then we'll power it up and see what happens. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this segment of the video. Stay tuned for the next episode. More stuff to come.